What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? How are you guys doing? So about a week ago, I got super brave, uh, put on my gloves, put on my mask, and ventured out onto the internet. And I asked you guys, the ladies and gentlemen of the internet, to share your worst, your ugliest, your most horrible triathlon race experiences with me. And this, this is that video. This is the video where I get to go over those stories, uh, pick the top 10 stories that I felt most represented that horrible first triathlon experience and share it with you guys. Okay, so there was just over 300 stories that were posted, and I actually went through and read every single one of them. Uh, and what I did was I was gonna pick my top five, uh, but I think I'm gonna go with top 10 favorite stories. And there was just so many hilarious stories. Obviously, I can't go through it and talk about all of them, uh, but what I think I'm going to do is just use the first names of these people, uh, just because these stories are actually pretty embarrassing. But if you hear your story within this video, go ahead, send me a private message, you know, either on Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Uh, let me have your address just so I can send you one of those swim, bike, run, rinse, repeat stickers. Uh, it's just kind of a bit of a congratulations. Although maybe it shouldn't be congratulations, maybe it should be something more like condolences. Uh, I have a feeling you guys will get the picture after you hear some of these stories. And the first story comes from Wayne. He writes, I was racing in New Jersey a few years ago. It was a two loop course. And on the second loop, I came into the corner too hot. I was coming into a left turn and I failed to make the turn. And there was a cornfield separated from the road by a drainage ditch. My Garmin said that I came into the turn going at 24.9 miles an hour. Uh, I successfully cleared the ditch. I did a somersault and stuck the landing. My bike landed about 20 feet down range. Shoes still clipped into my pedals. Water bottle missing in action. There I was standing in a cornfield, really hoping no one saw what had just happened. But sadly, I was wrong. Oh, my favorite part about this story is the fact that there is actual GPS evidence that was posted. Uh, so I sent Wayne a message, of course, saying exactly that. You know, hilarious, can't believe you've got GPS evidence. And he wrote back, I'm no fool. I let the Garmin run. I zoomed in on it just to see, and you could clearly see tracks of me walking around looking for my water bottle. I never found it. I liked that water bottle. <laughs> Wayne, awesome story, uh, hilarious story, and I am so sorry about the water bottle. Next story comes from us from Rex. Rex wrote, I wore a light colored one piece tri suit. <laughs> That's enough said. Uh, it was see through when wet. Everyone was looking and giggling. At least I made people laugh. That is the right attitude, Rex. Absolutely. When asked if Rex had bought the race pictures, he responded, no. No, he didn't. All right, next one comes in from Aaron. Aaron writes, my first 70.3 Oceanside Ironman. Uh, I decided I would wear bikini bottoms under my wetsuit and then change into bike shorts in T1. There was no changing tents, so I had a towel wrapped around me, trying to get out of my wet clothes and into dry ones. Uh, let's just say the spectators got a little bit more than they bargained for. I forgot my bike out exit was a hill, and I had my bike completely in the wrong gear. I'm halfway up the hill and literally couldn't turn the pedals or unclip. So I keep yelling, I'm going down, I'm going down. And I fell right over in front of my coach and had to untangle myself and walk up the rest of the hill. Oh, Aaron, I'm so sorry. That sounds horrible. 
Uh, hopefully none of us are laughing at your expense. Well, we're laughing at your expense, I'm sorry. Uh, awesome story, you're definitely better for having these fantastic stories, no doubt about it. And the next one comes from Christina, and Christina just writes, ran out of T1 with my race helmet on backwards. This is hilarious. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I had in mind uh, when I first proposed this question. Christina, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I feel like we've all been there. Uh, I hope it was one of those arrow pointy helmets that would make it all the more hilarious. Next story comes to us from Glenn. And I'll just show the picture here first. Uh, Glenn, Glenn writes, on my first IMUK, I got a bit of a sunburn. On the bright side though, I couldn't forget my race number for well over a year. Ouch. We have all been there, I assume. I mean, I've gotten absolutely fried while doing some of these races. If for some reason you've avoided being sunburned while racing a triathlon, drop a comment below and gloat, I guess. Uh, but I feel like we've all been there. Glenn, thanks for sending that in. Uh, next here is a, a note from Haley. Haley writes, in my first ever sprint triathlon, I came out of the water almost second to last because I almost drowned. I never swam in open water before. Hopped on the bike and was almost finished with the bike as they announced my name coming into transition two. In front of the crowd, I wiped out big time. Ugh, right in front of the crowd, I feel for you. I ran my 3.1 miles with blood running down my arms and legs. I got rid of the cages on my bike really quickly after that. To top it off, someone had to tell me to take my helmet off before I left transition. Ah, uh, I feel for you. I feel for you. Thank you so much, Haley, for sending that in. And the next story comes from Wolfgang. Wolfgang writes, uh, jumped on my bike at Pacific Coast Try, wondering why my head felt so hot. Into the bike ride, flew onto the run course, still perplexed one mile to go, and someone screams, hey buddy, you forgot to take your swim cap off. That's, can't be comfortable, <laughs> can't be comfortable. Uh, one thing I always do is just take my swim cap off and then kind of pull it into my wetsuit sleeve with my goggles, uh, and it kind of sticks in there, usually pretty securely as I run through transition and kind of drop my wetsuit. I always know either it's gonna be in my wetsuit like three weeks later after I pull out my wetsuit again, or I remember to kind of pull that stuff out after a race, but it's all about learning all these things, which is fantastic and awesome to have these stories for sure. Definitely a good one. Uh, next story is coming in from Janelle, uh, and she just writes, I killed a squirrel. I was on my bike when, just like something from a movie, a squirrel jumped towards my bicycle uh, with all four paws extended. It got caught in the gears, sawed in half, and caused me to fall. Uh, one half of the squirrel carcass was on one side of the bike and the other, the other side of the bike. Thus, my bike earned its name, the Honey Badger. <laughs> that is fantastic. I feel like anytime your bike can earn a nickname like that, that is legit fantastic nickname, the Honey Badger. Uh, hopefully she will send us pictures of her bike. I would love to see that. Okay, the next story comes from Michelle, and she wrote, uh, it wasn't an Ironman race, but I had been told to prevent my goggles from steaming up, uh, to smear them with washing up liquid the night before my race. And I failed to rinse out the wash up liquid prior to the race, and I ended up with chemical burns in my eyes. Needless to say, I had to DNF, and afterwards, I had to put antibiotic cream directly on my eyes four times per day for two weeks. Not my favorite triathlon experience. That is less funny and more horrible, but I feel for you. Uh, so sorry that that happened to you, and I'm glad that you're still into our sport. Uh, I looked you up on Facebook, and definitely you look like a badass triathlete, so you're clearly sticking with the sport, which is awesome. Next person that wrote in was Chris, and Chris wrote, first time racing in a triathlon, uh, got into the transition area and set everything up to my liking. Then I remembered um, some advice, chewing down a pack of energy gel about 20 minutes before the race might help. 
and I grabbed a gel, opened, started gulping it down. Wait, I don't know, they don't taste good, but this tastes so bitter. Okay, maybe it takes a bit to get used to. Couple seconds later, I really couldn't tolerate this gel. What flavor is this anyway? At that point, I was in horror. What should I do? Would I get sick? Nearby, a bottle of Gatorade. So I gargled it down like Listerine, spitting the whatever mixture from my mouth like a cat with severe hairball. Suffice to say, I now know how Old Bay seasoning really tastes. Oh my gosh, that must have been a horrible way to start your first race. Uh, awesome story though, Chris. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. And the 10th story comes to us from Matt, and Matt writes, I never need to poop before or during races, but this was one of those times, was doing a quick duck walk getting off the bus that took us to the race start, looking desperately for a porta potty. Just in time, found one, and everything good to go. Except being the wise, experienced athlete, I thought I better take extra care and clean myself well, or else suffer the ravages of those Klingons during the race. I spied a Purell dispenser and figured, what could be better for making sure everything is clean and good to go? Fast forward, my buddies were shocked when they saw the door to the porta potty slam open, me sprinting out with my pants hanging down and screaming for water. Someone graciously offered a bottle of water and I darted behind a small bush. The water helped to quench the flames, save the day. Yeah, who would have guessed it? High alcohol gel and tender butt tissue are not a smart mix. Matt also contributed this picture to the post, which I find fantastic. But Matt, definitely feel for you. And I gotta say, we, we definitely are all learning something here today. Okay, if you want a bonus story, I'm also on a podcast called The Dialed Cycling Podcast. And it's just four guys that sit around a table once a week uh, and talk about all things cycling. Uh, but this past week on the podcast, so whichever one is current as of the time of this recording, uh, I actually asked one of the guys at the table, Lance, you know, for one of his embarrassing stories. And he talks about a cyclocross race where he ripped his sh bike shorts right in the midsection there at a very revealing location, finished the race, and was talking to some of the competitors after the race before he even noticed what had happened. He actually had someone point it out to him. But if you wanna to listen to that, I will leave a link to the Dialed podcast down below in the description of this video, and you guys can check that out for yourself. Okay, thanks again to any of you guys and all of you that provided these fantastically horrible race stories. If you're into this sort of thing, and that would be swimming, biking, or running, uh, definitely be sure to consider subscribing. There's also a little notification bell down there somewhere as well, and that just allows you to be notified of whenever I post new videos, which is typically about once per week. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and we will see you guys in the next one.